In November, I visited the largest island of the Balearic Islands, an archipelago in the Mediterranean Sea. The previous video focused on the northern part of the island. In this video, also covering the second week of my journey, I explore the southern part. Welcome to Mallorca. If you drive from the southwest to the north, or vice versa, the route via the MA10 road is highly recommended. This route comprises a winding road that traverses the entire Tramontana mountain range, from Palenca in the north to Andratz in the west. The road has a total length of about 112 kilometers, and the travel time without stops is approximately 3 hours. Driving along this scenic road with beautiful views and picturesque villages takes you past many points of interest. One of these locations is Torre del Verger, built in the 17th century to guard the coastline against pirate attacks. In contrast to some other towers, this one is open to the public. You can climb the tower via a narrow staircase, providing you with a very nice view of the surrounding coastline. In the second week, I stayed in the seaside town of Pegra, approximately 25 kilometers southwest of the capital Palma de Mallorca. This town is particularly known for its three spacious white beaches, making it a perfect base for a beach vacation. In the middle of the mountain range, near Salar, lies the picturesque village of Biniarakes. This village is known for the deep gorge located in the mountains, namely the Barranc de Biniarakes. Through this gorge runs a path along which various houses are perched high in the mountains. The path, with many steps, leads over a distance of about 4 kilometers to the higher elevated landscape. This connects it to the main hiking route, making various other routes accessible. One of these beautiful locations is the Col de Lofer, which we will visit later in this video. Unfortunately, during my journey, the weather was bad, causing the top of this climb to be completely shrouded in clouds. Near the village of Cala Santani in the southeast of the island, you will find the sea arch, Les Pontas. This unique rock formation is located along the rocky coastline and offers several other beautiful viewpoints. The second hike I took on the south side of the island is also situated in the Tramontana mountain range. It involved the ascent to the top of Puig de Galazzo at an altitude of 1,026 meters above sea level. From various points, you can walk to this summit, I chose to start my route along the Ma, 10 at kilometer 97. From this point, you can complete a loop with a one-way hike to the top of the mountain. The total route is approximately 11 kilometers and takes nearly 5 hours. In good weather, the top of the mountain offers a breathtaking view of the southern part of the range. Not only is the summit beautiful, but the entire route traverses a highly diverse landscape. You'll pass through rocky areas as well as forests where you may encounter one of the many herds of goats on the island. One of the beautiful picturesque towns along the MA10 is Valdemasa. In this town, the Charterhouse Monastery is located, initially built in the 14th century as a royal palace. The building is particularly famous because the Polish composer Frederick Chopin and the French writer Georges Sand stayed here during the winter of 1838. During a visit, the adjacent port de Valdemasa should not be missed, 
This harbor to the west of the town is accessible via a winding road that offers stunning views. Due to the tranquil and relaxed atmosphere, this is the ideal place to escape the hustle and bustle for a while. In the relatively flat southeast of the island, near the town of Felonix, you will find several mountains with remarkable structures. One of these structures is Castel de Santuri. This ruin of a rock castle is situated on a 408-meter high plateau and was rebuilt in the 14th century by the Spanish crown. The first fortress built at this location dates back to Roman times, around a hundred years after Christ. The castle has fallen into decay since the 18th century, and the remnants can still be visited, although the ruin is not always open. Approximately 3 kilometers north of this castle lies San Salvador. On this mountaintop stands a former monastery, a monument, and a cross. The former monastery was built in 1348 as a safe haven where residents could flee during the outbreak of the Black Plague. At that time, it was believed that the higher you could go, the better protected you would be against diseases. Next to the monastery stands a colossal monument in honor of Christ. This monument was built in 1934, making it relatively modern. The entire structure has a height of 44 meters, with the statue itself at the top being 7 meters tall. The view from the platform, combined with the monastery, is very impressive. In the middle of the Tramontana mountain range, there are two artificial lakes that constitute an excellent spot for a beautiful hike. This hike can be both flat and ascending to higher elevations. The lakes were created for purposes such as providing drinking water to the island and irrigating agricultural fields. Starting from the MA-10, I took a walk around the southernmost lake, climbing the three eastern peaks, Puig de Lofer, Puig de Na Franquesa, and Puig de S.A. Retita. The latter, with a height of 1,110 meters, is the highest of the three. When walking the route counterclockwise, the view from the mountains is truly breathtaking. Even if you choose to only stroll around the lake's shores, the scenery remains stunning. The length of the hike covering the mountain peaks is approximately 13 kilometers, with an ascent of about 800 meters in height. In the first video, I already visited Cap de Formentor, where one of the most beautiful routes on the island is located. However, this is certainly not the only beautiful road that the island has to offer. The MA-2141 should definitely not be missed when visiting Majorca. This route is known as Snake Street due to its winding, long path, taking you over a distance of 14 kilometers to the coastal town of Sacalobra. A notable point on this route is the Nuz de Sacorbata, better known as the Thai Knot. The road here loops under itself in a 270-degree turn. The story goes that the road builder Antonio Peretti got the idea while tying his tie. In short, it's a beautiful road that leads you through a bizarre but incredibly breathtaking mountain landscape. The end of the route takes you to the coastal town of Sa Calobra, where the most important natural monument of Mallorca is located, Torrent de Perius. This gorge is the second largest erosive gorge in the Mediterranean and offers a unique experience. From the parking lot, a small pedestrian tunnel leads you to the gorge, from where you can take a special walk. When the water level in the gorge is low, you can walk approximately 6 kilometers through it. In bad weather, the gorge turns into a large river, making walking no longer possible. 
To the west of Andratz, you'll find La Trappa, founded by Trappist monks who fled from France in the 19th century. The valley of La Trappa had been cultivated for centuries before the monks built their monastery here. Little remains of the previous structures, a few buildings still partially stand. One of these buildings is an old mill powered by donkeys walking in circles on the upper floor, turning the millstone. Currently, the valley is undergoing extensive renovation, restoring it to its original state with funds obtained through donations. The valley is also known for its impressive viewpoint on the cliff of Sa Dragonera, a rugged island off the coast of Mallorca with a distinctive shape. La Trapa is only accessible on foot for tourists, and the most beautiful and fastest route is from the fishing village of Sant Elm. This route takes you to this special place in approximately 3 kilometers and offers a very scenic view during the walk. A visit to the beautiful capital of Mallorca, Palma de Mallorca, is an absolute must during your stay on this island. The city is renowned for its impressive Gothic cathedral that towers above the town. Moreover, the narrow cobbled streets of the old town and the royal palace of Almadina are also worth a visit. The last hike I undertook during my journey was the ascent to the highest mountain on the island, Quig Major. The summit, standing at an elevation of 1,445 meters above sea level, is part of a military complex with a large radar installation towering high above the island. Due to military activities, this mountain is accessible only on foot. The hike is divided into two parts. Starting from the MA-10, you begin with a steep climb against the mountainside. After approximately a kilometer, you continue the path via the road that leads to the summit. Due to the altitude and the mountainous location, you can admire almost the entire island and all the peaks from this point. During the walk, you not only admire the surroundings but it may also happen that the surroundings admire you. Two exceptional places that should not be missed during a visit to Mallorca are located in the mountainous area, namely Salar and its adjacent Port de Salar. Near Port de Salar, you will find the Cabo Gordo Lighthouse, built in 1842. From this elevated spot along the coastline, you have a magnificent view of the Bay of Port de Salar. The picturesque village with a large beach is the starting point of the tram line that runs to the larger town of Salar allowing for a convenient combination of visits to both places. A visit to Salar provides breathtaking views of the surrounding high rocky mountains throughout the city. It also offers numerous beautiful locations where you can overlook the city, with the mountains in the background completing the picture, high. With this special coastal town, we come to the end of this video and thus my journey to Mallorca. This island has amazed me in many ways, especially the beautiful nature it offers is worth a trip. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you soon.